The next morning, we meet ugly bug, crazy rainbow guide, Austin Hopped, and hit the road. Today, we're floating the famous Bighorn. Good morning. A short drive from Casper, Wyoming, you find where the Wind River turns into the legendary Bighorn. That's the plan for today. We've launched the boat. We're in search for big browns, rainbows, and cutthroat. Today should be an unbelievable day. What's that bottom play? It's called a pulsating emerger. Okay. It's gonna represent one of those trichos this morning. Yeah. It's a pretty cool pattern. It has a lot of action to it. It's got a bead in the middle of it and that, that hackle will pulsate. You're right, those were subtle. Subtle, subtle takes, eats, huh? they're subtle. It, it doesn't move much. Looks like you took the worm. Uh, yep. Nice fish, Austin. Beautiful. Good work, man. Nice. nice, in the hole. So we've got a three fly rig system going on here with a crayfish on top, a pink worm, and then an emerger underneath. Uh, here in Wyoming, you are allowed three flies, and uh, this one ate the worm. So water's a little off colored. Uh, pink stands out, and this brown ate. Let's take a look at it. There we go. Beautiful fish to start the day. No red spots on it, huh? Oh man, absolutely. That's Beautiful. That's a great one. Awesome. So that was a fat fish. That was a fat fish. Why are they like that? So up here we have, unlike the, the plat, there's a few less fish per mile. Yeah. And so um, with that we get uh, more, more food per fish, obviously. And so um, there's less com competition, less fish per mile to push those fish around. And so they do, they just, they just feed, feed, feed. And they are, obviously that was a testimony to, to why they're bigger. And so um, they just put on, put on more girth. Per year. So this is a quality fishery it versus is. a quantity exactly. fishery? Exactly. You're going to come Perfect. up here, you might catch a few less fish per day, but they're going to be, it's worth it to come up here and, and get the quality fish like that one awesome. right there. Perfect. So I generally like to run on multi-fly rigs, uh, tie the center fly um, eye to eye. However, in this situation, it doesn't actually work because what happens is, is it doesn't let the fly ride naturally. The hook is actually pointed down um, and it basically renders this fly unfishable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go against what I believe. I'm gonna cut this dropper off and retie to the bend of the hook. When I retie to the bend of the hook, that'll allow that fly to sit upright in the water column, the way it's sp supposed to float and um, we'll get a much higher hookup ratio because the fly is not sitting like that. You'll notice while we're nymphing um, down the bighorn here that we've got a variety of different kinds of currents that are out in front of us. Um, and typically when you have uniform currents, you can throw in a big mend and, and it should be fine. But when you've got multiple currents while you're nymphing and you wanna leave that nymph in the strike zone as much as possible, you wanna do, it's not really a mend, but it's more of an adjustment of your line. So instead of throwing line at, up, at an upstream or a downstream mend, it's more of a pickup and a move so that that indicator doesn't jerk and you're not moving your, moving your flies all over the place. Um, you know, you really, you really wanna keep those flies as drifting as naturally as possible uh, and that little adjustment move is a great way to do it without disturbing anything. Nice, beautiful. The structure that Austin is having us fish is, is really interesting and the fish that we've caught today have come off these drops. So what we've done is we've lengthened our leader to be able to, yeah, and sure, we're gonna tick a little bit as we're, as we're going downstream. Whoa. Beautiful. But um, what's happening is, as soon as that length of leader with the weighted fly drops off that edge, these fish are picking it up and it's just tons, tons of, oh, that's a big rainbow. Beautiful. Man. 
Nice That's a fish. Big one. So it may be a little bit more difficult to fish when you've got a longer leader on the flat before the shelf, but it pays off when those flies do tumble over and the result is in the net. Oh, it's an older fish. You can tell right away, huh? Yeah, it looks like uh, ate the worm. Beautiful, mature fish. Oh my gosh, that's long. <laughs> Look at the tail on that fish. That thing is, it's got a nice paddle. So Austin, the worm has lit it up today, but you want to make a change. Absolutely. It's getting a little bit later in the day here, and uh, these trichos are, are diminishing as we speak. Yep. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this last trico off, and we are going to put a leech on. Um, we're going to put it on as our last fly today. And what that's going to do is, is the way our rig sits is our weight's going to be the lowest part of our, our rig. And this, uh, this small mohair leech is going to be our farthest fly away from that weight. And so it's going to get more movement in the water and it's going to entice those fish a little bit to come okay. after it. Sit it, sit it, sit it. Nice fish. fish. Big head shakes. Nice. You knew there was a big one in I here. I knew there was. Austin. I knew it. I wasn't going to be a satisfied until uh, we found him. Nice. <sighs> Another Dude. worm fish. Another worm. So we fished the inside of this seam four times, and Austin said, you know what, let's go up and, I know there's a big one in here, let's go up and do the outside of the seam. And our first drift past, we see some awesome, awesome rainbows. 